Hey everybody, welcome to eTrailer.com. I'm Bobby, and today we're taking a look at the Thule Hitching Post Pro here in the back of our 2020 Tesla Model Y. Now guys, it's going to be a very nice way of giving yourself a decent little hanging style rack to get you and your four bikes to wherever your destination might be taking you. Now right out of the gate with any kind of hanging style bike, you're going to have sway. So that's going to be the big thing to look out for. One nice thing though here today, you guys can see we do have an anti-sway cradle that's going to be bringing our bikes back in the line. Now I will say that's not going to eliminate the sway 100%. As you guys can see, it will be moving just a little bit there. However, it really will do a great job of keeping the uh, amount of rotation that your bike's going to have and also bring bringing everything back in line relatively quickly, definitely more than so you would have if you just had these two top mounts. But talking about that, that does mean we have three points of frame contact. So if you're looking away of getting your carbon frame looking for a way of getting your carbon frame bikes to wherever you want to go. Unfortunately, this can end up warping and deteriorating your carbon frame bikes. And in fact, most hanging style bikes are going to do that. So you are probably going to have to upgrade to a platform or tray style rack to go ahead and get those carbon frames to wherever you want to go. And a couple other things you might have to watch, watch out for. If you do have any women's bikes, step through bikes or kids bikes, sometimes they're horizontal purchase isn't that great. Um, you don't have enough room in here and sometimes you have to end up getting a bike adapter bar. Now those just usually clamp right underneath your seat and that uh, handlebar post. However, um, they are one more thing to kind of keep track of. But if that's what we need to go ahead and start utilizing this rack, it really won't be that much of a uh, gouge in us to go ahead and make sure we can get our bikes appropriately on here, which is going to be great. Taking a look at the cradles themselves, you can see we have a nice little rubberized cradle there for the, for us to go ahead and hold onto our frames. And of course, those cutouts become great to fit your brake lines, any other kind of line that might be on your frame. Therefore, you're not going to have it rubbing up against there, causing any kind of friction damage, which is awesome. And these rubber strips are nice and thick for ourselves that's going to be doing well to go ahead and clamp on there. Now, the one thing I will say too, you do want to kind of keep in mind that they are black and rubber. So they are going to hold up well to that sun though, because of how thick they are. Not going to have that degrading anytime soon. Now, maybe years and years down the line, of course, the longer you guys keep this in the sun, you're going to see a little bit of wear, but you know, that's natural with anything on there. What's nice about that, you got that dual arm support, doesn't keep that bike from shifting too much, which is awesome. And with a 35 pound rating per bike, you're going to have no trouble getting most of the bikes you went up on here well within your standard and even into that mountain bike range of bikes. Again, probably going to have to start looking at platform style rack if you're looking for a way of carrying heavier bikes on here. Hanging style just doesn't quite get up there for these bigger guys that much. So definitely can be a nice little way of getting your bikes there in a nice concise manner. And to get our bike off, doesn't take any time. All I have to do, pull down on my strip here. That's going to go ahead and allow myself to take the bikes off. And on our anti-sway cradle here as well, same little practice, just get that out to the side and then we can go ahead and put our cradle up. Now the one thing I do want you guys to look at here, if we come to the back, you can see that our bike is going to be interacting with our tailgate a little bit here, or our tail lights. If you guys want to come in back here and see this a little bit. So keep in mind, if you get four bikes up on here, you are going to start blocking this just a little bit. Now, you have a lot of good distance between your bikes, so that emittance of the light is still going to be visible. Still at night, you're going to have an A-OK -okay time seeing it. Um, but that is something to kind of keep in mind with hanging styles. They do start impacting it a little bit more. And of course, with that backup camera, as you get four bikes up on here, you're going to start losing a lot of that visibility. But to take our bike off, all I simply have to do now is lift it, get it out of that cradle, walk Walk it down the line and already we're ready to ride. Now walking it up becomes just as simple for ourselves of course. All we have to do, walk it up. The only thing to watch out for is going to be these cradles. Simply sticking them up to the middle makes it really easy to walk it up and that'll happen in no time for ourselves. Now with any hitch mounted accessory, we definitely are going to be adding a little bit of length to our vehicle. Not the Model Y, not the longest, not the shortest vehicle out there though. So let's go ahead and see exactly what we're working with here today. From the back of the bumper here to the very end of our carrier is going to be putting us, if I can get my ruler to work with me here. Let me go ahead and use my middle of my carrier here guys, a little bit of a flimsy guy. So from the rear of the bumper now to the very back, that's going to put us at 36 and a half inches for ourselves there, guys. So definitely not the longest length out of there for a hanging style. You're usually looking about 40 inches or so, usually underneath that. So nice that we're kind of well within those marks. Um, you do have a decent amount of space in here between the bikes too. It's kind of why it's adding that length. It's kind of innate to it. We do have a way of shortening that down. At the top here, you're going to see this little spring clip and pin. Simply unlatch that. I can go ahead and bring these arms down. And they're gonna finally, we're gonna find that alignment that we need. Can be helpful to look in those holes. And there we are, nice and secure in this position. You're not gonna have these guys move it at all. It's one thing I really like about the hanging, the hitching post pro. 
What's awesome about it, no shifting, no movement. A lot of other hanging styles, when they get in this position, your arms kind of sway back and forth, and it definitely becomes something that causes a little bit of noise and just a little bit of movement that you can sometimes feel. So nice that it's nice and solid in this position. That's definitely gonna shave down a lot of space too, so we can see from the back of the bumper now to the very end, that's gonna be putting us right about 15 and a half inches at our furthest point with those rubbers stripping, kind of hanging out a little bit. So about 15 inches for any hard points of contact, which is nice to see. And we'd have a lot of space here between the back of our Tesla. Now I will say, I think we were gonna have a little bit of contact here with our hatch if we were to open up in this position. Luckily for us though, we can go ahead and actually tilt this down out of the way. Of course, we do have to remove our bikes, but all we have to do, another little spring clip and pin system. That's gonna let this guy hang down just like so. Now I can come to the back here. Now I can get those coolers, those helmets, anything I might need in the back of our vehicle. Becomes a very nice spot too to go ahead and relax. One thing that's really nice about the hanging styles versus the platform, they don't take up too much room on the side here, right? So two people could actually sit here, change your shoes, hang out, have a nice relaxing time while you guys are at the trail. And of course, um, just nice that we have access to that cargo. Now the one thing I will say though, you do have to remove the bike. So not gonna be as convenient as those platform styles of leaving your bike on there. So if you're wanting something that you can actually tilt away while hitting the go grocery store or the gas station on your guys' trip or on your way home, you will have to start looking at some more of those premium carriers out there, just as a heads up. We can go ahead and quickly replace that, get that slotted down, and there we are, nice and secure once again. You will see this little U-bolt here, which becomes awesome to go ahead and grab yourself maybe a cable lock or something. And that is the one problem I have with the Hitching Post Pro is that it doesn't have any innate security. It doesn't have a cable lock, it doesn't even have a hitch lock. So that's one thing I would have to say that puts it in a negative light for me and it's one more purchase I definitely would go ahead and grab. We wanna make sure that our bike our bikes are staying with our carrier when we leave it unattended. And of course, we don't want this carrier walking away. Um, so a hitch lock can be great. I believe it's a snug, snug tight or snug hitch from Thule that's gonna go ahead and actually grab you that. It's later down in the related parts. You guys just scroll down on that page. Gonna give you a way of actually giving yourself a hitch lock. And if you guys see here today, we are working with an inch and a quarter shank naturally with a two inch converter on it. That's gonna allow us to utilize these two inch hitches amazingly so. And again though, no locking core, but we do have an included threaded anti-rattle hitch bolt. This guy, all we have to do, take a three quarter inch ratchet, ratchet it down, and it's gonna get us nice and secure. As you guys are gonna see, as I'm shaking this, it's shaking the entirety of our Tesla. That means we're all in line with one system, making for a nicer, smoother ride for ourselves, our bikes, but especially our bike racks, or I'm sorry, <laughs> especially our bikes. Uh, the bike rack is definitely one that's gonna help our bikes as we get down the road. And the one clearance issue we might have here, we are gonna be right at 11 and a half inches now, the one thing I will say, we're very close to that rear axle, so we're not gonna have too much movement. Just keep in mind, as those front wheels go up, the back will go down, and so will your hitch-mounted accessories. So if you do find yourself attacking a very steep hill, it might be uh, nice to keep in, con in your conscious mind that you do have something on the back of your vehicle. However, with us being so close, I don't think we're gonna have any issue at all. And that's one nice thing about hanging style racks. They get your bike well enough out of the way of the ground, therefore, you're not gonna have any issues. But like I said, I'm a very big fan of the Hitching Post Pro. It's been on the market for a long time. There's reason people keep coming back to it. It's got that quintessential bike rack look, and you know it's gonna be working well for the years to come. Thule, always known for their uh, quality products, which is great to see. And I really do like how it interacts here with the Tesla. It doesn't look too out of place, you know. This guy is a nice looking car. We want something to make sure it looks nice on the back of it as well. I think this guy fits the bill quite nicely. Well guys, I think that that about does it for our look at the Thule Hitching Post Pro here on the back of our 2020 Tesla Model Y. I'm Bobby, thank you for watching. This is our test course. Let's start with the slalom. This shows side-to-side -side action, such as turning corners or evasive maneuvering. Then, onto our alternating speed bumps. This shows twisting action, such as hitting curbs, potholes, road debris, or even uneven pavement. Last of all, the solid speed bumps. This shows up and down action, such as driving through a parking lot or parking garage, or driving in and out of a driveway.